Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to GMAT 2019. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number five. Day, day five, and we are on page number 150. Make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page 150, and let's get going. We're going to pick up from number number 31, the very first problem that you see in the second column. And before I completely forget, yesterday we came across this word in the lecture, cursorily, which means to do something hastily, hurriedly. To do something hastily, hurriedly, cursorily. And we learned this word, yesterday I could not find the day number. We learned this word on day number 22. If you want to learn this word and if you want to improve your vocabulary, learn some other words, just type in GMAT, GMAT vocabulary words. Day 22, and the video will pop right up. In the search box, just put in GMAT vocabulary words and learn the word. Number 31. Number 31, the very first problem, as I said, in the second column on page 150, is asking us what's the approximate value, what is the approximate value of 60.2 over 1.03 times 4.86. And since they are looking for approximate value, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to approximate. 60.2 is approximately 60. And 1.03 is just approximately 1. And 5.86 can be approximated at 5. So it's just 60 over 5. The answer is 12. The answer is 12. The answer is B. Let's do number 32. In 32, they tell us, they tell us that, uh, that the floor measures 8 meter by 10 meter. We have a floor that measures the dimensions are 8 meter by 10 meter. We're going to cover it. We're going to cover it with carpet squares. We're going to buy carpet square and cover the floor and the carpet squares come in the dimension of 2 by 2. 2 meters by 2 meters. So far so good. We are further told that each each carpet square costs twelve dollars. The question simply is, the question simply is, what's going to be the total cost of covering this floor with these carpet squares that come that that come in the dimension of two by two? Let's find out, shall we? So the very first thing we need to figure out before we worry about how much it's going to cost us, we have to first figure out how many squares we need. Let's do that, shall we? So we know the floor, the floor is 8 by 10, 8 meter by 10 meter, and we're going to cover them with carpet square, each of them is 2 meter by 2 meter, 2 by 2, as we can clearly see, as we can clearly see, we don't have, we don't have to worry anything at all about the units, we don't have to do any conversion in units, it's not like sometimes they give you this, sometimes they give you this dimensions of the room in feet and dimension of the next thing in inches or meters and centimeters. Here we don't have to worry about any of that thing. We have the same units as you can see. Units are simply going to cancel out. That complication does not exist here. Let's divide 8 by 2 and we get 4. Let's divide 10 by 2 and we get a 5. So in other words, we need 20 squares. We need 20 squares. We know one square costs $12. Actually we can pick up from here. We know that one square, one square costs $12. We need 20 of them. We need 20 of them. If one costs twelve dollars, that means ten. Ten square must cost one hundred and twenty dollars. But we don't want ten of them, we want twenty of them. So we just take twice as much. And therefore twenty, twenty square will cost two hundred and forty dollars. Two hundred and forty dollars and that's your answer choice D. Or rather answer choice B. The answer is two hundred and forty. Number 32, let me just double check, it is B, yes, yes. Number 33, number 33, we are told that P equals 893 times 78. 
The question is how much is 893 times 79? How much is 893 times 79 in terms of P? In terms of E. So let's find out, shall we? That's the question. But 893, 893 times 79, 79 can be written as 78 plus 1 can't be. 78 plus 1 is 79. And now we can open the parentheses, we get 893 times 78, and then 893 times 1. 893 times 1 is simply 893. And we know that 893 times 78, 893 times 78 is just P. So it's simply P plus 893. That is your answer. You understand? And it might it makes perfect sense if you if you think about if you think about it for a second, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense for the following reason. It makes sense for the following reason. We know that 893 78s equal P. How many 78s? How many 78s equal P? 893 of them. Well instead of 893 of them, here we have 800 or rather the other way around. Let's start the story the other way around. It's not it's an, it's, it's not uh, 70. It's not the 78 we are counting. It is the 893 that we are counting. So let me start again. How many 893 equal P? How many 893 equal P? The answer is 78 of them. How many? 78. 78. 893 equal P. We don't have 78. 893. Here we have 79. We have one more. You see right here. We have one more 893. Instead of 78, 93, we have 78 of them, we have 79 of them. So whatever the P was, it's just going to be one, one more 893. That's all. The answer is D. The answer is D. I'm going to stop writing the letters each time because it's annoying. You can look in the book and obviously figure out what, what letter it corresponds to. Number 34. Number 34, again, I leave it up to you to read the problem yourself. Because there's a lot to read and I'm not going to copy, write down everything on the blackboard. So here's how it goes. We are told that we have a total of 140 books. We have 140 books. They are, they, they are made up of three different types. These are the three types. We have paperback fiction. Paperback fiction. We have paperback non-fiction. Paperback non-fiction. And then we have hardcover nonfiction. Hardcover nonfiction. Those are the three types of books we have. And here's how we there, here's what we are told. We are told that we own, or this guy owns, 20 more, 20 more paperback non-cover, paperback, paperback nonfiction rather. He owns 20 more paperback nonfiction. One more time, I keep repeating like a parrot. Make sure the book is in front of you. Read the problem along with me so that you follow because there's a, there's a lot of awkward sounds I have to make here. Make sure you follow me. Particularly given my accent. I have an accent. I understand that. I know that. So make sure you have the book in front of you. So we have 20 more paperback nonfiction than hardcover nonfiction. How do I know that? Because it says so in the problem. We are also told we are also told that we have twice as many, we have twice as many paperback fiction as paperback non-fiction. Those are the things that we are told and the question simply is how many, how many hardcover non-fiction do we have? How many hardcover non-fiction do we have? You see these are the three books, these are the three types of books we had. And the question is, how many hardcover non-fiction do we have? This guy right here is what we're looking, for, what we're interested in finding. Let's begin, shall we? Even though we just want to find out how many hardcover non-fiction we have, but we cannot answer that question unless we know any information, some information about the other two types of books. In other words, in other words, how many unknowns do we have? Even though they are asking only for one, or even though they are asking only for one. We have three unknowns. Right here are the three unknowns. The first unknown, we do not know the quantity of paperback fictions. They do not tell us that. Here is the second unknown. We do not know how many paperback nonfiction we have. And of course, we do not know how many hardcover nonfiction we have. 
there are three unknowns. How many unknowns do we have? Let's put it here. Here, here we have three unknowns. Since we have three unknowns, since we have three unknowns, we need three independent equations. Unless we come up with three independent equations, we cannot solve for these three unknowns. Our job is to somehow figure out how to come up with the three equations. Can you, can you figure it out? Can you see it? Here's the first equation right there. Total number of books that we have is 140. So that tells us the first equation. The first equation tells us that 140 must equal the number of paperback fiction that we have plus the number of paperback non-fiction that we have plus the number of hardcover non-fiction we have. Because the problem tells us that those are the only three types of questions. The problem tells us that those are the only three types of books we have. Paperback fiction, paperback non-fiction and hardcover non-fiction. So that's our first equation. Where is the second equation going to come from? That's our first equation right there. One down, two to go. Where is the second equation going to come from? Well, right here. This is our second equation right here. We own 20 more paperback nonfiction. In other words, the paperback nonfiction that we have, paperback nonfiction, the number of paperback nonfiction that we have is 20 more than however many hardcover nonfiction we have. So, paperback nonfiction non is simply however many hardcover nonfiction that we have is 20 more than that. In other words, if you had five hardcover nonfiction, we'll have 25 paperback nonfiction. You with me? That's our second equation. Where is the th third equation going to come from? We need third of three of them. Here's the third equation. The third equation is right here. It tells us we have twice as many paperback fiction. In other words, the number of paperback fiction that we have, number of paperback fiction that we have, is two times the number of paperback nonfiction we have. There you go. We have our three equations. Let the show begin. Now we can start the show. All right. Here we go. We don't need any of that thing. We just we, we know we have three independent equations here. We are done with that thing. We also don't need this thing because we know the word. The word was cursory. Cursory means hurry. Hurry or quick quickness or haste. Cursory means haste or hurry. Adverb would be cursorily. Cursorily, hurriedly, hastily, quickly. Those are adverbs. And yesterday this that word came up in the lecture. It cropped up in the lecture because what I told you yesterday is that one mustn't read the problem hastily. One mustn't read it cursorily is what I said. Because I read one problem cursorily and as a result I picked the wrong answer because I was too cocky. We mustn't, one mustn't be cocky, one mustn't be arrogant, one mustn't be cavalier and one, one mustn't read anything cursorily in the exam. Do you understand? Let's begin. Enough of the talk. So, here's our first equation right here. 140 has to equal paperback fiction. But paperback fiction, right, let's first write them down. Paperback fiction, paperback fiction plus paperback nonfiction plus hardcover nonfiction. That's 140. But paperback fiction we know is two times is two times paperback nonfiction. Paperback nonfiction we know is 20 more than hardcover nonfiction. Paperback nonfiction right here is 20 more than hardcover nonfiction. And then hardcover nonfiction. As you can see, we are, we are solving for this guy right here. We want to know how many hardcover nonfiction we have. So we have to get this entire equation in terms of hardcover nonfiction. So we have this guy, obviously, hardcover nonfiction. We just converted paperback nonfiction in terms of hardcover nonfiction because how many hardcover nonfiction we have if we were to add 20 to it that's how how many paperback nonfiction we have we still have to work on this guy it is two times paperback nonfiction we don't want we don't want paperback nonfiction we want to write this thing in terms of hardcover nonfiction so we're going to do substitution one more time just like we replace the paperback nonfiction by this quantity we're going to replace this quantity by that quantity right there so let's do one more time so it's two times 
two times paperback nonfiction, which is this thing. Hardcover nonfiction plus 20. Plus the hardcover nonfiction plus the 20. So you see this this quantity right here is what you see here, all of that. And hardcover nonfiction. Ha! Huh. Let's open the parentheses. So we get two times hardcover nonfiction plus two times twenty, which is forty. Plus, plus hardcover nonfiction plus twenty plus hardcover nonfiction. How many times do we see hardcover nonfiction? Well, I see this two times here, two of them. There's, I see one more. That's three, and I see one more. There are four of them. So four times four times hardcover nonfiction plus a 40 and, and, and a 20, that's 60, has to equal 140. With me so far? Let's subtract 60 from both sides. Subtract 60 from both sides, 60 is going to go away. And it tells us that 4 times hardcover nonfiction is 140 minus 60, which is 80. Voila. I don't know how far, how far down can, you can read, but if you can read a little bit down, it, it, it tells you that this implies the number of hardcover nonfiction we have is 80 over 4 or 20. Right here, we just found it. Hardcover nonfiction we just found is simply 80 over 4, which equals 20. That is our answer. The answer is 20. I just realized that uh, that. Uh, Usually I check in the back to make sure that my work is correct before I start making the video. I have not done so today. So I'm going to do them right now just to make sure that number 34 was it? Number 34, I the answer is 20 and 20 is answer choice B. 34 is indeed B. The answer is B. But of course I hope that you realize, I hope that you realize that in a question like this I didn't really have to go back in the back of the book on page number on page number 182 on page 182 in case you didn't know it on page 182 they give us answers so I just verified the answers it is the correct answer but I hope that you realize that in a question such as this one I really didn't need to go back to page 192 198, 182 to see if the answer was correct we could have verified our answer ourselves let's verify our answer shall we let's do the verification on the top well, actually, let's leave it there. We're going to read it. Uh, let's do a verification right here. Let's do a verification right here very quickly. So, how many hardcover nonfiction are we claiming? We are claiming that there are 20 of them. It's just a claim. It's just a claim we are making. That's what we came up with. That's what we're claiming. And we're going to find out if that claim is valid or not because we're going to verify it. I should write. I should have written verification, but I don't have the room to write verification. I just to verify. If that's true, if we have 20, 20 hardcover nonfiction, then how many paperback nonfiction do we have? Well, if we have 20, if we have 20 hardcover nonfiction, then paperback nonfiction must be 20 plus 20, which is 40. And how many paperback fiction we have? Well, paperback fiction is two times paperback nonfiction. We just found out paperback nonfiction to be 40. Paperback fiction must be 80. Let me add up these three figures. If they add up to what the problem tells us they should add up to 140, then we are all set. As you can see, 20 plus 80 is 100 and 100 plus 40 is 140. Our answer is correct. There was no need, there was absolutely no need, no need to check the answer in the back. Do you understand? We're going to stop right here. Tomorrow when we meet, we're going to pick up from question number 35, which happens to be the beginning of the next page, page 151. Alright? Bye now.